And I don't care where you are, what your circumstances are, what people have done to you, how much wrong they've done to you. Listen, God has given you the ability in your own mind to escape all of that madness and to be free. He's given you the ability to envision. Listen to me now. He's given you the ability to envision. That means right in there, he's given you the ability to create images, to envision and see the world as if you desire to see it. Woo! Do, do you understand that? You have the ability to create any image of the world that you desire right there in your mind, in your own imagination. And by creating that vision in your mind, in your own imagination, creating that image, God gives you the ability. Listen to me, man. I'm not a Sunday morning preacher. I don't even preach, right? I don't even preach. But here's what I'm telling you. You have the ability to create anything that you can see in your mind. That's crazy. You see, I'm sitting out here today in a little park, man, and it's beautiful. This is a beautiful little quay pond. It's got the goldfish, huge goldfish, man. They're, they're, they're large. Some of these goldfish, let me see if they're... I don't see any, I don't see any back there right now, but probably before I'm done. It looks like it may be one over there. But there's huge goldfish in this little pond out here. You know, and, and here's the thing. This pond hadn't always been here. It ain't always, it's not natural, right? This is man-made. But so, so what that means, is that means at some point in time before somebody made this because before i could sit out here and enjoy this there's a waterfall or two back there but before i could sit out here and enjoy this somebody had to envision this in their mind and not only did they envision this beautiful place out in their mind they envisioned that i would be able to come out here or people like me would be able to come out here sit on chairs sit at the edge of the water and look at the fish look at that coming up that, that's one of what's one right now that big orange one that joke is like two feet long Two feet long. If you don't know how long two feet are, put your front, your left foot in front of your back foot, and you probably, if you're a manly man, you probably got about two of them. And so that gives you about fish is about two feet long. All right. But before somebody could create this, they had to envision it in their mind. They had to envision it right here in their mind and dream up a blueprint. And you know, a long time ago, before we had pens and papers and all that, I don't know we've had it for a long time. We've had pens and papers for a long time. But before we had pens and papers. A joker, a man, could envision something in his mind. And then he could utilize his words to describe what he was seeing to a team of individuals or to himself and his partners to say, hey, here's what I see in my mind. And intuitively, oh man, I'm getting your gold nuggets today because we're talking about the intuition. I just said intuitively. Intuitively, he could see and develop instructions on how to put that thing together. You see, the person who was going to build this, this little pond out here, this quay pond, they saw it in their mind, and then they began to intuitively receive instructions on how to make this thing possible, how to put it together. Now, you may not be a master builder. I'm a master builder, so it makes a whole lot of sense to me. But what I'm telling you is that you can create anything that you desire because you have an imagination. And if you utilize your imagination, you can sit back and imagine any type of life that you desire. You can imagine any type of house that you desire. You can imagine the type of family, the type of environment that you would like to live in. And because you can imagine it, you can and now intuit, you can intuit and perceive different ways to make that thing a reality. Now, I know some of you, you're looking at me like right now, like, man, that sounds all good, but I ain't got no money. I don't have enough money to create the life that I desire. I don't have enough money to create the, 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 the quay pond sitting behind you. I don't have enough money to do that. I have the resources. And what I'm going to tell you is you've been lied to. You've been lied to, manipulated, and misled for a long time. I was just recently talking to a gentleman about capital. We're talking about capital and capitalism. You know, and I shared with him a long time ago. You know, man, you already know I grew up in the hood. I grew up. You know, I grew up on the other side of the, of the railroad tracks where the people wasn't rich, man. We didn't live in big fancy houses. You know, for the first seven of my years, first seven years of my life, I didn't even know that anything existed outside of the housing project. I did, but I really didn't. I really didn't, you know, because for me, all I knew was the, the center block walls on the inside, the brick walls on the outside, the sidewalk that we would race up and down as little kids and the dirt fields that we would play in. That's pretty much all I knew for like the first seven years of my life. That's all I knew for the most part. And nobody there had capital. Nobody there had capital. Man, that's crazy. I could go into depth on that. 
because everybody there had capital. They had capital in the form of money. Trust me, my mom, my grandmother was the first entrepreneur I knew, and the only way she made money is because other people had money, so they had capital. And not only that, here's the fact, because I told you I was talking about this capital with a, with a, with a gentleman, not just recently. And the thing I have, had to help him understand was that capital comes from here. Ideas. Ideas come from here. Ideas start in the imagination. Ideas start in the imagination. God is giving you a gold mine right there inside of your own imagination that you can utilize to envision, do, come up with new ideas. And what you do is you put action behind your ideas, primarily to provide some product or service to, to the world, to do something for the world that will encourage the world or induce the world, entice the world to in turn give you paper capital, green capital, that money capital that we keep in the bank. I live in D.C. I live outside of D.C. Not far out. Of, I live in D.C. But I live in the suburbs of D.C. But every time I go into the city, <coughs> it's amazing. I come across some kids as I go through, through, through the downtown area. And these kids have come up with an idea. Little poor kids, man. I, I don't know if they're poor. But, you know, when I was growing up, that's how people referred to us. They, they called us little poor kids. So, little poor kids, man. They came up with an idea. The kid ain't got nothing but a squeegee. A squeegee and a bottle of water. I stop my car at the at the stoplight. Kid jumps out with a squeegee and a bottle of water. Sprays the water on my windshield, squeegees it down. Squeegees the window down. <coughs> Next thing I know, I'm looking at the kid. He entices me to roll down my window. I roll down the window. He just cleaned all the bugs off the front window. I give him two bucks. 20 seconds, he made two bucks. I don't even think it took him 20 seconds because I think the light changes over 20 to 30 seconds or so. So in less than 20 seconds, he made two bucks. Hey, check this out. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's 60 seconds in a minute. So just imagine if that kid, and this requires you to use your imagination so that you can see this kid doing this, but just imagine this kid, every two minutes for one hour, he cleaned one car. And the car, person in the car, he enticed them, encouraged them, motivated them to give him $2. In that one hour, that kid just made $30 an hour. $30 an hour, simply because he had an idea to clean windows. He had an idea in his imagination. Something in his imagination, he saw cars driving down the street. And in our, in our mastermind course we do for Thank and Grow Rich, we call this the synthetic imagination, right? He saw cars driving up and down the street. He said, hey, I saw somebody else do this. I can do it a little bit better. He grabbed a bottle and a squeegee. I think he got the squeegee from the gas station. Hopefully after he makes his whole, hopefully after he makes 30 bucks, he'll go by and buy a better squeegee. But he got the, he, he got the squeegee, took it out, and started scraping windows. In one hour, you know, theoretically, theoretically, if this thing worked like we're talking about, you know, I'm sure not everybody in that, I don't know how many cars a kid watches an hour. I've never done it, but I've watched them. And if he did mine in less than 20 seconds, man. All right. So 30 bucks an hour this kid just made. Two hours, 60 bucks. Three hours, 90 bucks. Four hours. Are you with me here? This kid just made 120 bucks in four hours. 120 bucks in four hours. Whoa. That means in five hours. Oh my goodness. The kid's got 150 bucks in five hours. 10 hours one day. If he worked out there for 10 hours, he had 300 bucks. If he did that for 10 days straight, I'm willing to say, you know, if, if theoretically, he could have 3,000 bucks. You see, the only thing standing between most people and self, wealth, success, is the use of their imagination. Most kids have been discouraged from using their imagination. Most kids are like me, right? When I was growing up, the, the, the school system always said, stop being so imaginative. Your parents would discourage you from utilizing your imagination. Nobody wanted you to play make-believe. They thought that was childish. They thought it was kid stuff. Adults don't use their imagination. And that's why most adults are poor. 
That's why most adults are not a part of the 1%. It's a part, it's a reason that they're a part of the working class. Because the working class works for the other class of people, the entrepreneurs, the business owners, the people who utilize their imagination. You see, that one kid who was making, you know, two dollars every 20 seconds out there cleaning cleaning windows, eventually he's gonna have another idea that says, hey, I can I can clean vehicles. And because he can't do it alone, he's smart enough to know he can't do it alone, he's gonna hire his friends. His friends who, who were taught not to use their imagination will now become his employees. Listen to me, because if you're listening to me, you're gonna catch on to something here. And if you're listening to me, you're probably gonna teach this to your kids. And he's gonna, because you're gonna teach them to utilize their imagination so that they can become the boss, so that they can become the entrepreneur, so they can become the business owner, and so that they can hire their friends. Listen to me, if your kids are hiring their friends, the people that they already know, like, and trust, the kids who look like them, the kids they already like to associate with, if they're hiring them, guess what they don't have to do? They don't have to go out and ask other people for a job. I always get tired, you know, we always come up talking about, you know, our kids, we're raising our kids to go out and ask other people for jobs. We're doing that because we're not encouraging their friends or our kids to become the people who start the jobs. You see, that little kid who started out washing, you know, windshields at, you know, for $2 every 20 seconds, the one who's making $3,000 for like in 10 days, eventually he becomes the business owner. He becomes the business owner, he starts the business, he hires his friends. His friends have jobs, they grow, they scale, they help him to increase and, and, and scale the business even larger. And before you know it, they're all living pretty high on the hog. That's the, that's the term they used to say, right? They used to say, them boys is living pretty high on the hog. So he do it, and now all him and all of his friends are living pretty high on the hog. And you know how they did it? It all started by utilizing his imagination, utilizing his God-given natural gift. His natural gift, the same one that you have to see and envision anything that you desire in your mind. It's amazing. God's giving you that gift and most people aren't even using it. Most people, their friends aren't using it. And you know what's even more, more crazy? Is that sometimes you have a friend who's like that kid who was just crazy enough, right? We say it's crazy because you believe that you saw something in your mind, you believe that you could do it, and you went out and did it and tried to make it happen? What? So some people say they're crazy. I say they're crazy too. You have to be crazy to believe that you could make something out of your mind like this, this quay pond. Who would ever believe that? You saw it in your mind and then you made it? You started a business? Your kids started a business? And they hired the other kids in the neighborhood who looked like them, the ones that they like, the ones they already know that they trust, the ones that they can talk like? Now we're gonna come back later, we're gonna talk a little bit about trust because hey, in the area of trust, some people got to step the game up. But this week is all about imagination. We got to learn to utilize the imagination. Learn to utilize the imagination. Learn to utilize your natural God-given gifts, talents, and abilities. God gave you the ability to see and envision anything that you desire and to be able to create. He has given you the ability to be able to intuit and to think and think about how to make and design, how to create what it is that you see in your, in your mind. And because of that, Look at that, there's another little goldfish. Man, I love these fish out here, this is beautiful. But because of that, you have the ability to be the master creator of yourself. You have the ability to create the life that you desire. You have the ability to share this knowledge with as many people as possible. Because listen, we need more people to tap into their imagination, to utilize their imagination to create the life that they desire. To create a life that's gonna make life better for other people. You know, there's an old saying that says, hey, if you don't, if you don't have the courage to go after your dreams, if you don't chase your dreams, then it's okay. Just find somebody else and help them to make their dreams a reality. I want you to make your dream a reality. I want you to use your imagination. Hey, it's Wednesday, Wednesday Wisdom and Leadership. I don't know if you've already shared the video, but listen, if you made it this far, you gotta share the video. Share the video, man. Let's get somebody up on this. Press like, press love. Give me some love. Let me know what you thought. You know, we're gonna do this, right? Wednesday Wisdom and Leadership, your boy Ernie Davis, AKA the People's Coach. You know, listen, use your imagination, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, baby.